difference that we learned is that we took each account and we divided it into two parts. Everybody agree with that? And in these two parts, we said we would put for assets, because they were on the left side of the equal, that we would increase them on the left side. And basically, we just grouped all the pluses and all the minuses on two different sides. So we would have things going on like this, right? Yes. I might need to answer the question, you know, what, what, what is that? Is that rent? What is that? What's another thing that I might need to know as I'm looking at this that I don't currently have with this T account? The date. The date. When? When did I? When did I do this? Okay. So, what did I do? And when did I do it? That's not covered in this T account. What is something else that may need to happen to come up with my balance? Right. What your balance was on any given day. So all of those are important things that we need that we don't really know from this information off of a T account. So chapter four is here just to provide us not with new concepts for accounting, actually, because you have that down. The debits and the credit part is the tough part. That's the important part. Now we just need to say, how are we going to keep these records so that everybody understands? Well, one of the ways that we're going to start, that we're going to start is what is called a journal. When you think of the word journal, think about your English classes. Right in it, maybe they called it long ago, they called it a diary. So it is in a particular order, and that's called a chronological order. We're going to call this the general journal. An example of what this journal is going to look like. There's several columns to this general journal. It starts at the top, it says general journal, and then it has a page number on it. It begins with the word date. Didn't we say that was something important, that we wanted to know when something happened? It also has a description. Is that something else that we said was very important? We'd like to know what did we spend this money for? The post reference. I want you to just save that for a few minutes. I'll talk about that in just a little bit. And then you have two columns that say debit and credit. When you put information into the journal, it is called journalizing. And you're going to do it in a particular order. And that order is date order as it comes in. So if this is my company and I have a receipt for fuel, I can put that one in first. And the next one is a receipt for rent that I pay rent. I can put that one in next, okay? Now, in your world where you are in accounting right now, I strongly suggest that you have a piece of scratch paper. I want you to turn it sideways, just like we've been doing in class, and write assets, equal liabilities, plus owner's equity, and I want you to T account things out. Because at this point in your knowledge, and the fact that we haven't been able to repeat this a thousand times yet, so therefore, you need to be able to see exactly what the transaction is first, analyze it in the way that we have been doing it in Chapter 3 before you place it in this journal. That's my scratch paper. So let's go back to that very first one that we've been doing in class over and over and over. We can't pick on Sabrina since she's not here. But we did something where the owner dollars into the company. Is that the first transaction that we've been playing with for several weeks now? And we said at that particular point in time what two accounts are affected. You remember that? And we said capital, right? And we said capital is going to increase on which side? Because which side of the equal sign is it on? It's on the right. So capital in that particular example was going up by two thousand dollars. That was the example that we had used. And we said the second one that went up was cash. Cash went up by $2,000. And it's going to increase on the left because it's an asset and it's on the left side of the equal sign. Everybody agree with that? Now it's time for us to put it in this form here. Okay, I'm going to start with the date column. You notice that there's a little, two little boxes here. I'll squeeze in. I need to put two things on that first little box. So I'm going to start with the, the year. So this is year 20, 
2013, the year is, and the month. And if this occurred on the second day of January, I'm going to put a two right here. That is my first step in journalizing, is to put the date. The second step in journalizing is to write down my debit. And you see all which one was that? It's going to be my cash because I have cash here as a debit. Okay? Now I don't want to put here grandma's investment in my company. That's not the kind of description that I'm looking for. I'm looking for this description right here, which is the name of my account, which is cash. And cash is my debit, so I'm going to write the word cash here. And then I'm going to skip this column for now. And what is this? A debit. So I'm going to rewrite debit here. By the way, the big one here is for cents. We're just dealing with all round numbers now, so you can leave this blank if you want to. Some people put OOs there. Sometimes that gets confusing to you, and you can make that into $20,000 pretty easy if you do that. So be careful about that, okay? So I finished up this side, right? Next line, I'm going to write, if I wrote my debit first, I'm going to write my credit second. And when you're writing down your credit, think about way back in the day, like when you were in kindergarten and you were learning how to indent a paragraph and your teacher used to say, put your finger down for the indention before you start writing the next word when you wanted to indent a little bit, I want you to almost do that here. So I'm going to indent, of course it's a little bit bigger than a finger, I'll use a hand up here, but I'm going to indent a little bit and I'm going to write the name of this account. Remember that the name of the capital account for a sole proprietor always begins with that sole proprietor's name. So we had Sabrina Jordan as our entrepreneur, right? And um, then I will follow that with capital. I'm going to skip post reference column for now. Do I write anything in the debit column? No, instead I'm going to write it in the credit column. Can I easily look at this and see if I'm in balance? It's easy to look at now, isn't it? I can look and say debit credit, both are 2000, I'm good. That is step number two, is the debit. Step number is the credit. Step number four is going to be oops, four is going to be the description. So the description of this could be I'll also indent again, by the way, for my description. And I'm going to say my my description is going to be maybe investment in the company. Now it could be any description that you wanted it to be. It could say, so this investment, the description can be anything that you want it to be. It can be four lines long if you want it to be. You could say, you know, Aunt Myrtle left me, blah, 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 and I did this and I moved 20000 over from here, blah, 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 blah. Whatever is going to be good for you to remember. This is the part where you can be creative. These two things, you're not creative on those two lines because they're the names of your accounts. Right? And there's nothing that's written in the dollar and cent column on that description. So that's going to be step number four. Step number five, which by the way is not covered in your book, but I think it's important. It just barely mentions it in your book. But I like for you to leave a blank line. So I refer to step number five as a blank line. And you'll also see in just a few minutes why I like to have five steps. So I have step number one is my what? Give me the name. The date. Step number two, debit. Step number three, credit. Step number four, description. Step number five, skip a line. Okay? No, don't write next space. Okay. And that's a good question. The reason that I don't want to write in that space, Jameson, is because I am trying every which way to not make a mistake. That's what nine-tenths of what I'm teaching you up here is about, 
It's just so if you will do it in the same particular way, then when, whenever you arrive at the end and you don't balance, you can easily look back and see why you didn't balance. And if you have skipped a line, you can look at each one of these in a little blur, and your eyes will focus on that little area, and you can look at it and say, that matches, that matches, this matches, this matches, all the way down. So if you'll segment it out, you'll be good to go. Good question. Any, any confusion about how to make a journal entry? Do you see why it would be important to have a piece of scratch paper here? It's important to have a piece of scratch paper because after you've analyzed it down here, then it's easy to write it up here. So what about one of those? Let's take one more example. Maybe one of those where I had a revenue. I received some cash, and then I also had some that would be receiving later, okay? So let's do that particular one. I don't remember what the dollar amount was, but let's say that that revenue, by the way, revenue is on the right-hand side, also on the right-hand side of my umbrella, so it increases on the right, and right means credit. So let's say I earned $1,000 of revenue, but they only paid me or $400, okay? So what's going to happen to cash? It's going to go up 400 and the rest of it I will be receiving later, correct? So that's going to be receiving later is accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is an asset. Assets on the left means it increases on the left. And how much am I going to be receiving later? It's the form of 1,000, right? So it's going to be 600. So how do I write that? Here. Well, I've skipped the line. Correct? What are my five steps? The date. Okay, on the second date, we do not have to repeat the year or the month until it changes. So let's say this happened on the third. Then I have nothing in this column, and instead I'm just going to put a three here. Of course, when you get to page two, and you're at the top of a new page, then you also want to put the year and the month again. But until this point, all you have to do is just to put the day of the month that this transaction occurred. So I've taken care of step one. What is step two? Debit. The debit. What is so my since, debit? since cash and accounts receivables are both debit, okay. which do you put first? Two, two don't I? So... It doesn't really matter to me which one you put first, but I guarantee you when you stick it in the same gauge, it's going to matter. <laughs> They're going to want it in a particular order. You might have to play with that just a little bit in your same gauge. But I'm going to list cash first, just because I like to list the most liquid first, and that's going to be cash. Cash is my debit. I'm starting up against this line, right? And the amount of cash is 400. My second step is still carrying on, isn't it? Because I have one more debit, just like Bradley said. So I'm not going to admit this line. Instead, I'm going to spell out accounts receivable that increased by 600, correct? Now, step three is my credit. So I'm going to indent for my credit. And my credit was to my revenue. And I think we had the revenue account was called delivery fees, right? And it was a credit for a thousand dollars. Are we agreeing so far? So we've got step one is the date, step two is the debit, and in this instance I had two debits, and my credit is step three. Step number four, I'm going to end in twice, and it's my description, right? So it could be delivery, deliveries made to um, technology building. Whatever your description is that you want it to be. And it can be more than one line long if you want it to be. Okay? Does anything go this direction? At that point, no, nothing happens there. And my last one is that I'm going to skip a line. So step number five is to skip a line. Are we cool? Did you get for your credit? and indent for your description. 
And that way, whenever, once again, all, the only reason that you have to do that, you don't have to do that, actually. The only reason that I suggest that you do that is because you can easily, when you're looking back, you can easily say, okay, I have a debit credit description. I have a debit credit the description. So it's a stair step that you can visualize inside your journal so that it's easy for you to look backwards and find any of your mistakes. Okay, so let's do one more. This one more is going to be for uh, rent expense. If I were putting this in my in my uh, umbrella chart, so to speak, what would happen on this side? If I paid $100 in rent, what happens over here? Cash decreases. Cash goes down. What happens over here? Rent expenses expense. is going it actually goes up, but expenses is dotted line up there, right? So it's actually decreasing on that side. So which one is my debit and which one is my credit? Rent is going as my debit, is yes. So that's one of those common things people a lot of times want to try to list cash first. But it's not cash that you're listing first, it's the debit that you're listing first. Okay? So in that instance, because remember, here was my cash, right? And I went down $100. And over on this side, I had my expense for, for what did I have, rent expense, yeah. that I had $100. So you see my debit and my credit? I want to write my debit first. So let's take the date on that one. I'm just making this up as I go. It was on the 5th. So we'll put the 5th. And I'm going to list my debit first, which in this instance is rent expense. The rent expense is my debit for $100. And answer the Taylor's question, I'm going to indent my credit. I don't have two debits here, do I? So I indent my credit, and my credit is to cash. And cash is the credit for $100. And then I'm going to indent one more time for my description, and I can say rent for whatever this month was, January, etc. And then I skip a line. So I've got step one, two, three, four, skip a line is fine. Then as I'm looking at this, I can easily say debit credit balance. This is called a compound entry because my debits still equal my credits, and here my debits equal.